Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about areas of surfaces of revolution. And let me talk a little bit first about the problem that we're actually trying to solve here. So uh, let's say that we have a graph and we have a curve. Here's a curve uh, uh, or a function uh, that is sitting over the x-axis. And we take that function itself and we spin it around the x-axis. Okay, if we spin that thing, what will it look like? Well, I think in this case it would look kind of sort of like some sort of a vase. Okay, something like this. Uh, and what if I were to ask you, okay, what is the surface area of this shape? So I don't care about the volume inside this shape anymore, just what's the surface area around the outside? And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to cut this into little pieces, just like we did for arc length, cut it into some little pieces. And then just like we did for arc length, I'm going to treat each of these pieces as a line segment. So now we spin all of these little line segments and we get what we call little frustums. Okay, that's a geometric object. And from geometry, we know how to find the surface area of one of these objects. And then we uh, take the limit as the number of these little intervals that we're rotating around the x-axis goes to infinity, and we will get the actual surface area. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire proof of this formula for surface area. It's in any calculus book, and uh, it's very similar to the arc length formulas derivation. Uh, you do many similar things. You need the mean value theorem, just like you did for arc length. So I'm not gonna re-prove uh, surface area to you right now, but I would like you to look in your book and actually look through a proof for surface area. Uh, you should be able to follow it now that you followed my proof for arc length. And you see that you get this formula. So surface area, is equal to the integral from a to b, where a is this starting x value, and b is this ending x value. This is my function f of x. And what goes inside is 2 pi times f of x times the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared. And you'll recognize this square root and everything inside the square root is exactly what we put into an integral for arc length. So the only change here is we get this extra 2 pi f of x, okay? And uh, it's interesting because what is 2 pi f of x? This is kind of like a 2 pi r, which is a circumference. So we've got a circumference times a length and that's what we call our surface area. So this formula in some ways makes sense. We've got a length times a circumference inside of our integral. So now it's time to look at some examples of how do we use this surface area formula to find surface area. So go ahead and watch some of the example problems and get a better feel for that.